Hey, Kim Nerds, this is your first flipped video lesson. I'm Miss Dooley. And I'm Miss Diaz. And we're gonna try this together. And it's gonna be super awesome. We both talk a lot and we both talk loud. So if we go too fast, you can always press pause, go back and get the info you need. But you're gonna be great. Okay, so go ahead and get out your foldable that we made in class yesterday. Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit about chemistry and what you're gonna study in this class. Um, you've probably heard these words before in middle school, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on them. Um, chemistry is really just the study of matter. Well, you're probably like, well, what's matter? Well, matter is just anything that has mass, okay? And a lot of you think that mass is how much something weighs. Well, if you look at the picture, it's really not. Mass is how much stuff is inside of it. How much it weighs to you is how much it feels like, which is why we weigh, quote unquote, less on the moon. Um, volume is how much space you take up. So if you were to meet me and Miss Julie in person, um, I take up a lot less space than she does because I'm 4'11 and she is not. Um, density is how much mass is inside of that volume. So something is going to feel heavier if it is denser. So there's two types of matter that we're gonna talk about on your foldable today. So the first type over on the left is pure substances. You hear the word pure all the time, but what does it really mean? We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. And then we have mixtures, I always calling messy mixtures, and I'll explain and elaborate when we get to that slide. So we're gonna talk about pure substances. And so here's that word pure. Um, so we're talking about matter that has a uniform and definite composition. These aren't words that you guys typically use in a sentence. So we probably need to explain just a little bit what exactly do these words mean. The word uniform is just like if you went to private school and everybody wore the same exact thing. So if I looked at your class or looked at the passing period in the hallway, everybody kind of sort of looks alike and it's hard to tell who is who. Um, same thing here with this guy. When I go left to right, it looks exactly the same. Definite composition means it never changes. And so if I reached into a bag with this chemical here, I'm always going to pull out one of these little red dot complexes. I'm sorry, it looks like a butt. And so I'm going to reach in the bag and I'm going to pull out this little red butt. Um, and so every single time I reach in that bag, that's what I'm going to pull out. That is what it means to be uniform, which means it looks alike from left to right, and definite, which means his composition never changes. He's going to look exactly like, if I looked at this little compound down here, which you should recognize probably as Mickey Mouse or water, every time I reach into the bag, I am going to pull out one of these little characters that looks just like the head of Mickey Mouse. So something that's really important that shows up on tests and quizzes all the time is uh, right here. These guys have a definite melting and boiling point, which means if it's water, you may or may not know, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't really use Fahrenheit in chemistry. We like Celsius better. And so water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It's never gonna change as long as you are at standard temperature and pressure, which we don't even talk about until the springtime. The other thing is that we always know that water has a density of one gram per milliliter. And so water's density never changes. So because he is a pure substance and he has a definite density and a definite melting and boiling point. Okay, so pure substances can be broken up into either elements or compounds. Okay, so elements are the simplest form of matter, which just means that they can't be broken up into anything smaller, okay? They are made of atoms, which I know you've heard that word before, and we're going to talk a lot about atoms in chemistry. Um, you can find elements on the periodic table, so that giant thing on the wall in your classroom is called the periodic table of elements. And each element has a chemical symbol, and it's one to two letters that represent that element. So if you look over here at carbon, see how it has the C after it right here, that is its symbol. Same thing with gold and hydrogen. 
so what's different between an element and a compound? A compound has at least two elements in it. And so these two elements hook up and they form a little chemical baby. Don't get any ideas. And so this is a chemical reaction and a chemical combination in a ratio. And you've heard that word in math. In ratio means that there are these whole numbers that come and they have to come in this perfect uh, way into the reaction so they can hook up to make this baby so the baby doesn't look weird. And so properties are totally different from the elements that it's made from. So I always tell kids, when you think of A combining with B, what is that going to form? Well, in a chemical reaction, A plus B is actually going to make Q. None of y'all were expecting me to say Q. Q doesn't look like A or B. It's not what you would expect at all. And so the, the chemical baby that comes out of this compound does not look like his parents at all. These compounds can be separated, but only by a chemical reaction or a chemical change. And so water is a compound. Water has a chemical formula H2O, the ratio is two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Sugar also has a ratio, look at this big old sugar blob, yum. And so sugar's ratio is 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. If one of these numbers in the ratio changes, you no longer have sugar anymore. You have a different compound that looks something different than sugar. It might not be something white that you can eat. It might be green and it might be fatal. It might kill you. And so this ratio is really important to making these compounds uh, have the chemical properties that they have and behave the way that they do. Take a look at this example. So when you look at sodium, most of you think of salt when you hear sodium, but sodium is not salt. It's just half of salt. This is actually a silver metal. We have some in the stock room down the hall from you. You should be a little bit afraid because if it touches water, it explodes and it goes berserk. And so this is it's got the consistency of ice cream and you can take a plastic spoon and you can sliver some off the side and have these little chunks of silver sodium metal that explode. You can't touch your fingers to it. You can't even expose it to air for very long because it goes nuts. So dangerous chemical A. Here's chlorine, our chemical B. It's a green gas. If I filled up your classroom or your bedroom with chlorine right now, you would die. It's fatal. It'll kill you. When we combine chemical A and chemical B, a reaction forms. Later this week, we're going to talk about the, the signs of a chemical reaction. You can definitely tell that something's going on inside of that flask. When A and B hook up, you'll notice... Now we get salt and we can eat it. That is so weird. This'll kill me, this'll kill me, this is yummy and makes me happy. But that is what I mean by A plus B makes Q. The baby, the chemical baby over here looks nothing like their parent. Okay, let's talk about the other side of the foldable mixtures. Okay, so a mixture is just a physical blend of two or more substances. So if I had two things in my hands and I just mixed them together, I didn't make a reaction, I didn't measure it, I didn't care. It's kind of like when you're little and your mom lets you help her cook, you just kind of dump it in because you have no idea. That's what a mixture is. We can separate them physically, which means I could literally pick out the parts sometimes if it's big enough, but sometimes it'll be too small, but nothing new is formed, and that's very, very important. So if you look at this picture here, we have... Um, a mixture of elements X and Y, and when we um, separate them physically, just like I said up here, we get element X and element Y. So now we're talking about these messy mixtures that you just dumped in the same bag. There's two different kinds. You guys learned homozygous and heterozygous last year in biology. We're using the same prefixes, but our, our stem on the end is totally different. It's homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So we're going to differentiate between those two for you. In a homogeneous mixture, you guys should have remembered 
that the prefix homo means the same. So in a homogeneous mixture, I just dumped a bunch of stuff in, I stirred it up a really good time, and I got me some Kool-Aid. Now we know because we made the Kool-Aid that there's both the powder and there's the sugar and there's the water if you're making old school Kool-Aid. You've got all three of those in there, but when you stir it, stir it, stir it, you can't see those different parts. If this was chocolate pudding or refried beans, Ew, beans are gross. Miss Diaz doesn't like beans. So if these were refried beans, there might be all kinds of ingredients in there, but you can't see them because we mixed it up so well, they're hidden. Um, and so these are homogeneous mixtures where you dump it in, nothing cool happened. Yes, the Kool-Aid tastes good, but you didn't see heat like bubbles fizz, nothing interesting. It's really boring. Mixtures are boring and all the parts blended really, really well. Even though you can't see the parts of this homogeneous mixture, we can still separate the Kool-Aid back from that water. And I know that seems weird, but think about it. How could we get either the Kool-Aid or the sugar or the water out of this pitcher? Some of you guys did an activity in, in middle school where you evaporated out the water. And so if you, if you boiled this, the water boils at 100 degrees, but the Kool-Aid sure doesn't. So the Kool-Aid stays inside the pitcher and the water goes away. Okay, so now we're going to talk about heterogeneous mixtures. Remember, hetero means different from heterozygous last year in biology, like Miss Dooley talked about. Um, and it just means that it's not uniform in composition. So they all look different. They all don't look the same. Just like at Halton, we don't have uniforms. We don't all look the same. We can all wear whatever things we choose. I wear a lot of purple. Um, the components are going to be readily distinguished, which just means you can pick them apart easily. So like if you look here, I believe this is sand. You can see all the different little parts in there. Um, and you could physically pick them out if you really wanted to. Same thing here with these gummy bears and whatever this candy is. So just like we were talking about separating that water from Kool-Aid a minute ago, um, these are the different ways that you can separate a mixture. And some of them are a little more involved than others, but these are what we call physical properties or physical separations. Nothing exciting happens. And so the first way that you can separate a mixture is by size. So if we were picking out the parts of that sand that you saw on the previous slide, I would give you some tweezers and you would start to sort. Or I could give you something like a sifter that you use in a sandbox when you were little and you could pick out the seashells from the beach sand. And so that's one way to separate a mixture is by size. The second way is by magnetism. Sometimes I give you a mixture and there's something that, that'll stick to a magnet and so you can pull that straight out of that mixture with any sort of magnet third way, really simple, is by color. And so we could do that with the gumballs. We could do that with sand. The weird one that seems really fancy, but it's really not, is distillation. And that's what this little apparatus is over here. They've got some kind of blue mixture over here. And what they're doing is using a Bunsen burner underneath to boil that water. When that water boils, it goes up the tube through this condensing chamber here and it's cooling off the boiling water and it's turning it back into pure water. So you've got pure water over here and whatever other chemical that was mixed with it is just sitting in that container because it doesn't boil at 100. So if you had a liquid with two different ingredients, you could actually separate them into their two components, which is pretty cool. That's how they make whiskey. That's why they call it Jack Daniels Distillery. They take out the extra water so people can have a lot of alcohol. Don't do that till you're 21. The next way is chromatography. So chromatography will separate dyes and pigments. They might all start out black, but then they might separate into different colors. We're gonna do a cool activity next week so you can actually see what we're talking about with this. And so your black pen is different than your neighbor's black pen. I could almost guarantee it. And then the last way we can separate a mixture is by that evaporation technique. Just leave it sitting out, the water will evaporate and whatever was mixed with it will start to crystallize and you'll see the solid. If you've ever watered your plants in the summer and you came back later, you can sometimes see a white film on the leaf of your plant. And that's the salt that was actually in your hose water that crystallized when the water evaporated because it was just so dang hot outside. So hope you enjoyed our first flipped video lesson. 
Come back for more. See you tomorrow.